will tune in on YouTube a little bit later. Uh, so we, we want to welcome you also as we have a wonderful celebration today uh, as we celebrate God's uh, faithfulness to our church. Uh, let me give you uh, just a few announcements. Um, well, I want to start with a, a thank you card. Let me share this uh, thank you card with you. It says, uh, Friendship uh, Baptist Church family, uh, thank you uh, for uh, the floral gift certificate and sympathy card, and thank you uh, for all the prayers for us during the illness and loss of our mother and grandmother, uh, Leslie Turpin, uh, for the Leslie Turpin family. So continue to uh, remember them in your prayers. All right. I want to say uh, thanks. Uh, we had a wonderful uh, prayer march yesterday at the Lincoln County uh, Courthouse, and uh, we had over 70-plus uh, people. Uh, we had folks from our church. Uh, we had uh, uh, Brother James Earl Hunsucker and folks from Elmo, and we had uh, Pastor Greg Warnock and folks from First Baptist Church uh, as well. And I want to uh, say thanks to all of our folks who, who uh, led in prayer, who read uh, Scripture, and, uh, and, and showed up in, in support, and for, you, and for many of you that were praying at home. So, so thank you for that, and uh, I saw that they had a, a fantastic uh, crowd in, in Washington, D.C. as well. Uh, it, was, it, it was just amazing, and uh, it gives you a lot of hope uh, when, people, when you know that people are praying for our country. Um, coming up in October... Uh, we're going to have uh, special services on Sunday night, so, uh, so pencil that in on your calendar. And we're going to have praise and prayer services on Sunday night. Uh, next Sunday night, uh, Brother James Earl uh, from Elmo is going to be uh, preaching and uh, our revival service for us. Uh, we also will have um, um, my nephew and niece, uh, uh, Craig uh, and, and Alex Dickerson. Uh, they'll be coming one night and sharing their adoption uh, testimony. Uh, we have uh, Ariel and Jake uh, Holly, uh, they'll be coming and, and talking to us about the ministry of SWAT and uh, human trafficking and those issues. And then also um, we have a missionary family. Give me their name again. Chris and Rebecca Adler. And, uh, and so they are missionaries from Malaysia. Uh, they'll be coming uh, one Sunday night and, and sharing with us as well. And then uh, every Sunday night throughout the month of October, um, we're going to have special prayer for specific issues leading up to our election in November. Uh, so, so come join us, and we're going we're gonna to pray. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to let God challenge us uh, through, through uh, preaching, through testimony, through those things, okay? And so that'll be throughout the month of October. Today, uh, today in our ceremony, uh, as you know, we're celebrating uh, paying off our church debt. And uh, we're going to be burning our note here in, uh, in just a little bit during our ceremony. Uh, at the conclusion of our uh, ceremony, we're going to have communion. So if you'll look there in your pew, uh, you'll find um, a little communion cup there. And you need just a tad bit of instruction to go along with this. If you'll look at the top of it, it has the little wafer in the top. And so when we come to that particular time, you'll peel back the, uh, the film for that part. And you'll have your wafer, and then you will. Um, then the next part opens up, and you'll have uh, your juice. Now, if you notice something about the little cup, it's white grape juice, right? Now, uh, this was not intentional. Um, we uh, we ordered from Amazon, and on Amazon, everything looked perfect, but when it came in, it wasn't red. It red was on back order, so uh, so we wound up with white. And, uh, but you know what? Jesus said it was the fruit of the vine anyway, right? And his blood is represented by the fruit of the vine. And uh, one thing that we can think about as we take it is his blood makes us white as snow. So, we, uh, so we're getting there already, right? Or white as wine. It's not real wine, by the way. That'd be a shocker, wouldn't it? <laughs> You're getting a spirit up in here. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What else are we going to talk about? There's a little book right out right here. This is uh, History of Friendship Baptist Church. This was done up for our 200-year um, anniversary. There's three of these books in the foyer out here, and there's one in the fellowship hall. So uh, if you want to take a glance at that, uh, you certainly, uh, certainly can. So I've made those available for you. Now, well, it's taking a long time, ain't it? We are fixing to eat today. And praise the Lord, this is our, our first uh, church-wide 
uh, fellowship uh, since uh, we've gone in all this uh, pandemic and social distancing and all that stuff. Uh, we, we are taking a lot of steps to uh, hopefully make you feel comfortable and, and safe as well. So let me give you a tad bit of instruction here. Um, once we close our service in here and move over to the fellowship hall, uh, we'll have the blessing in here. Uh, we'll move over to the fellowship hall. Now the tables are numbered over there. So uh, once you sit down at a table, you go on in and you sit down at a table, and, uh, and then the number will be called out. And when your table number is called out, that's when you will get up and go and serve uh, your food and come back. Okay? And so uh, the things are set on the table there. Uh, so you just go in, you sit down at your table, you wait for your number to be called, and, uh, and then you'll be able to get up and, and go and to serve. And uh, so we'll, we'll do it that way uh, in an orderly fashion. And, uh, and we'll have a great time and enjoy it. And I want to say a big thanks already, already. We got folks that are participating in our service today. Uh, I want to I say thank you uh, for all, all of you who are participating in our service. We've had folks here early this morning uh, making sure that the food is ready, the tables are set, and all of that was done for us and serving us. And I want to say thank you uh, for everyone uh, who's serving us today as, as a church family. And, uh, and being a part of, of our service. And thank you for being here. And I can't wait to talk uh, about uh, Friendship Baptist Church as we move on with our service. Would you stand with me and take your hymn book? Let's turn to page 26 as we begin our, our worship today uh, with a responsive reading from Psalms 145. From Psalm 145, page 26. I'll read the light print, and together uh, we'll read the dark print. Let's share God's word together. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. The Lord is faithful to all His promises and loving toward all He has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Great is the Lord, and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Let's pray together. Lord, we are here today to celebrate your faithfulness, to celebrate your greatness. Lord, I pray that you would fill this place with your spirit. I pray, God, that we would seek you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. And I pray, God, that Jesus Christ will be uplifted in every way today. Thank you, God, not only for your greatness, but thank you for your faithfulness. And thank you for your righteousness. And, Lord, I pray that as your church, as your people, Lord, that we would be found faithful that we would be found righteous in how we live and how we serve you. So, Lord, may everything that's done today and everyone that's involved in our service in some way and each one that's here, Lord, uh, uh, to worship, I pray, God, that it will all be done for the honor and the glory of your name. For your name is great and you are most worthy of praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you'll join me in singing our offertory hymn, it's 786, Count Your Blessings. We'll sing the first and the last. And upon thy 
hands below to our tempest tolls. You are discouraged, thinking all is lost. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to the journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. <clears throat> Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we do thank you, Lord, and for all the many blessings, Lord, that you've given us, Father. And Lord, I, I do pray, Lord, that we would take the time to count them. And Lord, that we would have the attitude of gratitude, Lord. We do thank you, Lord, uh, for how you've blessed us as a church, Lord. The fact that, Lord, you paid this building off. And Lord, we do realize, Lord, that everything that we have is yours. And we, we do... Um, I do pray, Lord, that, Lord, we would always give back what is yours. Lord, go with us as we enter this time of the service. I, I pray, Lord, that we would always give with a cheerful heart, Lord, that uh, we, we'd give in accordance with your will. Lord, we do pray, Lord, that you would be with us today, that you would fill us with your spirit, Lord, be with those that are participating in the service, Father. Lord, I do pray, Lord, that you might speak to us through your word, Lord. Be with Brother Chad, empower him by your spirit. We thank you, Lord, uh, for the power that's found in your spirit. Lord, just go with us. We thank you so much, Lord, for this time that we can gather. And we ask these things in Jesus' name.
Amen, Rochelle. That, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. The year was 2009. Friendship celebrated 200 years as a church in this community. When you think about it, over the course of 200 years, there have been many churches across this country who've had to close their doors permanently for various reasons. But friendship, where the friendless meet friends and sinners meet Christ, has remained the body of Christ in our community since 1809. Amen? Because of God's faithfulness and by God's grace, the light of Christ has shined through our church for the good of our community and for the cause of the gospel around the world. Throughout our history, friendship has consistently discipled, encouraged, and supported one another for the work of ministry and missions. Over the years, many from within our church have been called out by the Lord to serve in ministry and missions. And as a church, friendship has always given generously to the work of missions across our country and in many parts of our world. As a church family, we can look back to so many who were found faithful in serving, in working, and in giving for the good of our church and for the glory of Christ. Because of God's faithfulness and the faithfulness of so many through the years, we are here today. Our doors are not closed. Instead, we are still blessed to serve the Lord as the body of Christ within our community and be a church that is loving Christ and reaching people. After discussing and praying and seeking the Lord together, in 2009, we moved forward in faith to renovate our facilities. As a church family, we took on the responsibility of a loan Nearly a million dollar commitment. To my right are the original plans. The groundbreaking shovel. To my left, our campaign. Find us faithful in the measure of our campaign commitment. And a copy of our loan. We began Challenge to Build. And our theme... Find us faithful. We believe that who we are as a church and what we are called to do revolved around faithfulness. God's faithfulness to us, the faithfulness of those who had gone before us, and our need to be faithful to the Lord, to His church, and to our calling to share the gospel. Since 2009, we have seen the births, of many babies. We have celebrated graduations, we have celebrated weddings, and we've mourned at funerals. We've seen a lot of changes in our individual lives, as families, as a church, as a community, even as a country. We've experienced good times and hard times, joys and sorrows, ups and downs, celebrations, and heartbreaks. Since we began Find Us Faithful campaign, we've had faithful members who've gone on to be with the Lord. Today, we remember them. Today, we express our gratitude to those who've gone on before us, who left examples of encouragement and faithfulness that inspired us. Over the years, we've said goodbye to some good people who've moved on from our church. And we appreciate their service in the past and their work and their commitment. But we've also been blessed to welcome many into our church family who have stood up and been faithful and served our church. Through it all, one thing has remained. God's faithfulness toward us, found in the truth of His Word and the power of the gospel. 
When we started Find Us Faithful campaign, we encouraged our people to pledge or to sign a three-year commitment to give a certain amount that they decided to give above their tithes. After the first three years, many renewed those commitments. And a lot of people continue to give the way they gave over 11 years ago, above their tithe. Since then, many within our church have been very generous and very faithful in their giving. Some have given weekly, some have given monthly, some have given periodically. People have given small amounts and some people have given large amounts. And as we know, giving to the Lord is not about equal amounts. It's about equal sacrifice. And because of God's grace and God's faithfulness, and because so many have been found faithful over the past 11 years, we celebrate today. And we are blessed to stand here debt free. I'm reminded of what the Apostle Paul says in Romans 13, 8. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. As a church family, let us not only be found faithful, but let us move forward in faithfulness. Together, let us move forward in faithfulness. Faithful to love one another. Faithful to grow together in Christ. Faithful to seek first God's will for our church. Faithful to serve the Lord with joy. And faithful to share the gospel with our community and with our world. Let us celebrate faithfulness today. And let us move forward in faithfulness. Because as Hebrews 10.23 says, let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering, since he who promised is faithful. Today, we have a number of folks that represent all generations within our church that are going to come and share God's faithfulness with us from his word as we celebrate a today of faithfulness and as we have this ceremony of burning our note. We're going to begin uh, with Sage Smith today. Sage is one of the first babies that was dedicated in our new building. I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord, Psalm 122. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Psalms 116. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children. For those who keep his covenant and to remember to obey his precepts, the Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Psalm 103, 17 through 19. And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches of glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Philippians 4, 19 and 20. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all time, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Second Corinthians nine eight. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Psalms 90, 1 and 2. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth, 
I will make your faithfulness known to all generations from Abraham Moore. Let me get all my paperwork straightened out. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, when Brother Chad asked me to do this this morning for the speaking for the senior adults. He picked one about as senior as they can get. <clears throat> And I thought about what I was going to say, and I came up with this. And back 11 years ago, Miss Katie asked me to talk about the building program, and I did. And I figured no one would remember what I said back then, so I'm going to do it again. And my testimony is I would like to show you how I got where I am today from where I was back years ago. I have attended Friendship Baptist Church 83 years. Let me take you back to an old white frame building sitting back behind where this one is, known as Friendship Baptist Church. <clears throat> as a six, <clears throat> as a six-year-old boy, I was sitting back in this section here somewhere. I was attending my mom's funeral. As a 14-year-old boy, I was sitting about seven rows back in in this section, and the revival was going on, and it was the last night when. We were already standing, and the invitation was, was, was there. And I was hanging on to the pews, really. I remember that. And uh, I don't know what happened, but the next thing I knew, I was going front. I gave my life to Jesus that night. And, uh, of course, at Friendship Baptist Church, I met the love of my life. And that was a spark. And after 64 years, the spark's still there. So we were married in the old church by Raymond Parker, if you remember him. And uh, we were outgrowing the church, and the church voted to build a new church. When we voted back then, we didn't raise our hand or say amen. They stood up. And uh, they had already, uh, the ones who voted yes, stood up. Then they were going to vote no. And I was over there, and my grandpa was standing. He voted no. But he was in his 90s, and he couldn't see us paying that kind of money for a new building. But uh, after all was said and done, he supported the will of the church, and we moved on. And we built the new church, which is back here back. And uh, my dad's funeral was here. And we have four boys. He walked the aisle, this aisle here, and uh, gave their hearts to Jesus and was baptized here at Friendship. And I want to thank God that about 60 years ago, Friendship Baptist Church had a vision and built the facilities where we have worshiped and studied the Bible all these years. So many good memories and some sad ones, but we're moving on. The church needed more space, so we undertook a new building program and set out to find financing, and we found it. We went into the bank and asked for a loan of around a million dollars. First question he asked is, how much money do you have? And of course, we all looked at each other. We have nothing. <laughs> and, uh, he took a chance on us anyway. And we, we went into this program. There was a man from the Baptist board in Jackson come down and talked us to going into this program called Find Us Faithful. And he said, most churches, <clears throat> it usually takes three three-year terms. You go through it three years, then you renew it three years, renew it three years. We went through it one time. And that speaks a lot to Friendship Baptist Church. There was times when I had to transfer money from the general fund to the building fund. But it all worked out. And you're the ones who made this possible. You were faithful and committed. Now we have a million and a half dollar complex and we're going to roll a dime. But uh, picture 50 years in the future, someone like Sage get up here and say, thank you, Friendship Baptist Church, in 2009 for having a vision to enlarge and remodel this church. This beautiful church has served us well, but now we need more space and we're moving on. All right, I'm going to try to sing a song this morning. I told Brother Chad I would. I'm going to try it. Would you be praying for me?
Brother John, we appreciate that uh, testimony, and, and um, what a great way to bring it all together and celebrate today. Psalm 145, 13 says, Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule is for all generations. The Lord is faithful in all His words and gracious in all His actions. Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be provided to you. Honestly, it was a little nerve-wracking to take out this loan 
but even more nerve-wracking to have your name signed on the note. And uh, in 2009, Friendship Baptist Church is the borrower. Bank of Brookhaven was the lender. The loan amount was $950,890. That's a specific amount that Friendship uh, took out. August the 13th, 2009, at 4.75% interest. The signers on the note, Chad Yarbrough as pastor, Glenn Case as chairman of the deacons, Clark Calcote as a deacon council secretary, and Johnny Watts as a treasurer. Also, our trustees, Brother Carol Watts, and the late Brother Edwin Smith. So we appreciate these men as a church to be willing uh, to sign this note to put their name there. In 2015, we refinanced this note. January, I mean July the 10th, 2015, for the loan amount of five hundred and twenty. $8,244.79 at 4.75% interest. The signees for this amount when we refinanced it was Jimmy Smith, the chairman of our deacon council, Johnny Watts, our treasurer, Shannon Smith, our deacon council secretary, and Chad Yarbrough, your pastor. And God has been faithful. At this time, I would like to ask those who read for us if they would come back up, and I would like to ask those who have signed our note if they would come up.
together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, You'll join us in singing Trust and Obey, hymn number 571, the first and the last. Wow, amen. God is, man, God is so good. God is so good. Thank you, everyone, for participating in such a, um, a great time to celebrate. And thank you as a church uh, for being faithful, for being who you are. A preacher announced one Sunday about the building project at the church. And he said, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is we have all of the money to pay off our building debt. To which many in the congregation said, Amen and praise the Lord. And one deacon spoke up and said, Well, preacher, what's the bad news? And the preacher said, The bad news is the money is still in your pockets. <laughs> Today, we share in a great blessing. Because the pockets at friendship have been deep. And because of the people have been faithful. Through generous giving over the past 11 years, we celebrate the good news of paying off our debt and burning our note, and we stand here today debt-free. It is a testimony to God's faithfulness to us and to the faithful stewardship of so many through the years. Our celebration is a great way to conclude this month as we have emphasized our stewardship. We have been talking about why we give. And we have answered that question as follows. We give because of who God is. He is sovereign creator. He is loving savior. He is gracious provider. And he is strong protector. We give because of what God has done. He has loved us. He has redeemed us. And he has blessed us. We give because of who we are. We are the children of God. We are the body of Christ, His church, and we are stewards of the gospel. And today, as we close this service, as we come to the time of our final emphasis on stewardship, why we give? We give because of what we're called to do. 
We give because of who God is. We give because of what God has done. We give because of who we are. And we give because of what we're called to do. So what are we called to do as Christians? What are we called to do as the body of Christ, the church? Well, to answer that question, we must realize that what we're called to do is based on who God is and what God has done. And when you look at who God is and when you look at what God has done, you see something about God. You see something about His heart. And that something is this. God is on mission. God is a missionary God. What does it mean to be on mission? Well, to be on mission is simply this. It's to go somewhere to serve someone with a specific task for a specific purpose. Now, when you look at our world, at the chaos and the conflict, the pain and the brokenness, the evil and the immorality, the disaster and the despair, the biblical worldview tells us that this world has been broken by the sin of man and that we are all sinners inherited from Adam and Eve's rebellion in the Garden of Eden. But God's story of Scripture is this. That God so loved the world that what was lost in the garden, God is reclaiming through the gospel. And what is the mission that Jesus said His life was all about? Jesus said in Luke 19.10, The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Now in Luke 15, Jesus gives us a beautiful picture of of the heart of God. It is the parable of the lost sheep. Do you remember that story? Where Jesus said the man who has a hundred sheep loses one, but yet he leaves the 99 in the open field and he searches until he finds that one lost sheep. And then this is what Jesus said and it gives us the picture of the heart of God. It says when he found it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders. You get that picture of that man putting that lost sheep that is dirty and and torn and scuffed up and he's putting it on his shoulders. And coming home, he calls his friends and his neighbors together saying to them, rejoice with me.
But I know there's some happy bulldogs here today. It's a bright future. And there's some wandering rebels trying to figure out what's going on. But you know, when that football team takes the field, one player can't do the job, can they? They can't win the game by themselves. I mean, it's one thing about football. It takes everybody on the field. I mean, the quarterback can be fantastic, but if nobody blocks for him, it doesn't matter. The quarterback can be a dynamic passer, but if they can't catch the football, it doesn't matter. The offense can be unbelievable, but if the defense is terrible, it doesn't matter. It takes everybody on the team doing their part to be a winner. It's the same with the church, with the body of Christ. We are a team, and Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He is the Lord. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. It is known as the Great Commission. It is Jesus' instruction. It is His command to carry out His mission of sharing the gospel with the world. This command involves every Christian who makes up the church. If you have been baptized, you are a part of the church. If you are a part of the church, you are responsible for the Great Commission. It is the call to intentionally go into our communities as well as into our world with the purpose of reaching people, teaching people how to be faithful followers of Jesus. Now there's something you need to know about the Great Commission. Here it is. Every Christian is responsible to do their part on the team to fulfill the Great Commission. Every Christian has a unique ability to contribute to fulfilling the Great Commission. Every one of you has been gifted in a certain way by God. If you're a believer, you have been spiritually gifted. Your uniqueness, your ability, each of you has a unique ability to be a part of fulfilling this Great Commission. Whether you're young or whether you're old, you have a responsibility with your ability to fulfill this Great Commission. Every Christian is expected to work together within the church to fulfill our calling. We are expected to work together to be united. And then lastly, every Christian will be accountable to Christ, who is our judge, who is the Lord, who has all authority, for our role in fulfilling the Great Commission. So it's all our responsibility. And everything that we do as a church is connected to this passage of Scripture, to this command, to the Great Commission. Every member of the church is called to do their part in some way to contribute to fulfilling our calling. Doing our part will always involve serving others, working together, and giving of ourselves and giving of our money. You ever notice something about the world? It takes money. Have you ever noticed that? And when it comes to going and making disciples, that involves ministry. It involves missions. And ministry and missions always require money. Always. Do they require your blood, sweat, and tears? Absolutely. But do they require your money? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that's the way the world works. Whether it is keeping the lights on at the church, whether it's paying off a debt, whether it is providing needs and preaching to the gospel to people on a mission field, whether it is Sunday school, discipleship training, small group Bible studies, whether it is teaching the gospel to children through vacation Bible school or helping youth attend a camp where they can be inspired and hear the gospel, we give because it's what we're called to do. It's a part of fulfilling the Great Commission. Go and make disciples. But it requires our giving. The second thing is this. We give because of what we're called to do. 
and we're called to be faithful servants. Mother Teresa one time said, I'm not called to be successful, I'm called to be faithful. That's what it's all about. To emphasize this, Jesus gives us a parable in Matthew chapter 25. I'm not going to read the whole parable. I just want to summarize it and refer to a passage for us today. In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus talks about the parable of the talents. You might remember that parable. There was three servants and the master. The master entrusted with them talents. To one servant he gave five. To another servant he gave two. And to another servant he gave one. And it says here... Depending on each one's ability. So each servant received a responsibility based on their ability. But there was an expectation for all three servants, and that was for them to be faithful in investing that talent for the master. Immediately, the first two servants invested their talents, they made it a priority, and as a result, they earned more. While the third servant, who only received one, buried his talent. Now when the master returned, the first two were praised for their faithfulness. They were rewarded with greater responsibility and they were blessed with joy. To both of those servants, to the one who received five and earned five more, to the one who received two and earned two more, the master says, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. And then listen to this. Share in your master's joy. And when he called up the third servant who had buried his talent and brought it back, so here's your talent, the master said, well, why didn't you invest it for me? And he began to make excuses. But yet instead of his excuses being received, he received judgment. Here's what we learn. Every Christian is responsible for using their God-given ability to invest in God's kingdom. Every Christian is expected to make God's kingdom and God's work their priority. And every Christian is called No matter what your ability is, every Christian is called to faithfulness. To faithfulness. Because ultimately, every Christian is accountable to the Lord. Now let's get this picture as we close this point. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul says this. Paul says, We are servants of Christ. We are managers. We are stewards of the mysteries of God, which is the gospel. Now that word for servant of Christ, that's a word that I want to give you this picture for to take with you. The word that Paul uses there for servant literally means an under rower. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, servants of Christ. It means that you are an under rower. What is an under rower? Well, if you will picture an ancient ship, you remember those ancient ships and you would see the oars that were coming out from the hull of the ship? And in the hull of the ship was the slave gallery. And the slaves sat on those benches beside each other, holding those roars. They were responsible for powering that ancient ship wherever it went on the command of the master that was over them. That's the picture that Paul is giving. Paul is saying we're servants of Christ. We are under rowers. We are powering the gospel ship to go where God wants it to go. And we are called to put our hands on the oar and we are called to give of ourselves. We are called to give of our resources so that we can carry that gospel ship where God's leading us. 
We are under rowers and we're called to be faithful. As a matter of fact, in verse 2, Paul says, it is required of managers, it is required of those who have been entrusted with the gospel to put their hands on the oar, to give it all they got, and to be faithful to the gospel. In Jesus' parable, the master tells the faithful servant, he says, he will not only give them more responsibilities, but they will share in the master's joy. What is that joy? Let me take you back to that picture of God with the lost sheep. The rejoicing, the joy that Jesus is talking about is sharing in the salvation of others and the blessing of God's eternal kingdom. Let's close with this. When you take your Bible and you open the book of Philippians, it is a fantastic book. It is called one of the prison epistles. Why? Because Paul wrote it while he was chained up in prison. Now when you read the book of Philippians, if you didn't know that, you would think that Paul's life's going great in a lot of ways. Because the book is all about joy. The joy of the gospel and the joy of serving the Lord and the joy that God brings into your life. And in verse chapter 1, verse 5, Paul celebrates the church at Philippi and he says that they are a partner with him in the gospel from the first day they accepted Christ until now when he was in prison. And then he concluded in Philippians chapter 4. He said that he appreciated their giving giving to his ministry, giving to the mission work of the gospel. And he tells them that from the very first, they were the first church that shared with him in the matter of giving and receiving. And then in chapter 4, Paul had received a gift while he was in prison from the church at Philippi to help him continue even from prison, to conduct ministry and missions. And this is what he says in verse 18 as he closes the letter. He expresses that their gift to his ministry and to the mission work was a fragrant offering, acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. Every time you give a dollar, every time you write a check, Every time you place that in the offering plate, every time you give that as an offering to a ministry or to a mission in some way, it is a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God when you give it for the right reasons, with the right motivation, for the right purpose. And you know what Paul concludes? That last chapter... To Ephesians with a promise from God regarding their faithfulness in giving. And this is what Paul says. And my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 19. So we give like the Philippian church. We give because of who God is. We give because of what God has done. We give because of who we are. And we give because of what we're called to do. We're called to fulfill the Great Commission. We're called to be faithful servants in all things. Today, had an awesome opportunity to celebrate the completion of our Find Us Faithful campaign. And the joy of being faithful in giving to the church for the purpose of the gospel. In this calling, we've been found faithful. As we look forward to what we're called to do in fulfilling the Great Commission and being faithful servants, let us be challenged to move forward in faithfulness together. From find us faithful... To forward in faithfulness. Because today we celebrate ultimately the faithfulness of God. Who God is and what God has done. And God's faithfulness is always bound 
to the promise and the power of the gospel. Spoken through his word and revealed through the person of Jesus Christ. You know, ultimately, the faithfulness of God is represented in the very act of communion. At this time, I want to ask Miss Rochelle if she'll come back. I want to ask you to pick up your communion cup there from your pew. If there's not enough cups on your pew and you need to retrieve a cup from another pew, please do so now. You can go ahead and take the top layer off and receive, and take out your wafer, the bread. And as we have celebrated the faithfulness of God today, realize that the bread and the juice have an ultimate symbol of God's faithfulness. God's love for us, God's grace to us. For the body of Christ was broken for us and the blood of Christ was shed for us. And as you hold the bread and, and as you take of the cup, remember God has been faithful. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And God has provided for all of our needs according to to the glorious riches of Christ. As we take communion today, let us celebrate this faithfulness and let us be challenged as the church, challenged as Christians, not only to be found faithful, but to move forward in faithfulness together. Lord, I thank you today. I thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings. Thank you for your faithfulness to Friendship Baptist Church. Thank you for your faithfulness to each and every family and each and every church member. Lord, we thank you for your love, for your grace. We thank you for your forgiveness. And we thank you for the future that you give us. Lord, help us. Encourage and inspire us through the work of your Holy Spirit. Lord, to move forward in faithfulness in our lives every day and as a church in all we do. Would you stand with me? As Jesus shared that meal with the disciples for the first time and he broke the bread and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. He said, take and eat. The Bible says that after supper in the same way, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink ye all of it. Now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to His power that is at work within us. To Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever, and all God's people said,
again. I'm so glad that you're here today, that we can celebrate together today. Uh, we're going to close uh, with the blessing for our food now. Um, and you will uh, just want to remind you, once you head over, you'll sit down at a table. Your table is numbered. When your number is called, you go serve my plate. <laughs> Wherever I'm sitting. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. So when your number's called, uh, you'll get up and you'll go serve your plate. And I want to say thanks again to all the folks fixing and serving for us today. And uh, we appreciate them. I'm going to ask our Brother Tim Ratcliffe if he'll close us with a word of prayer. Bless our food, and then you'll be dismissed.